Welcome back to the news. I've got a patch date, major frame rate improvements, game releases from Dreamhaven, and changes within the game that very much hit Mythic Plus, which has been in a controversial spot lately, so let's get into things. The big news is patch 11.05 releases October 22nd, and it shows something good, that Blizzard's commitment to their patch cycle still holds. The eight-week rule that they kicked off in Dragonflight has actually held true, which is pretty damn impressive, but compared to 10.05, 11.05 is actually vastly larger. These minor patches tend to have small small story things, small quests, maybe transmog, world content changes, but this time it's much larger. I'll have a full guide very, very soon, but here's a short version of what you can expect. So, Blizzard are adding a full 8 boss mid-season raid. It's a remake of Blackrock Depths, there are 8 bosses, plus a couple of mini bosses, and what's quite amazing is that it's not throwaway. You see, the past anniversary raid events were LFR only. They were often a little bit of a shit show. If you were back in Molten Core 10 years ago, uh, yeah, I was too. It was rough. This Time, though it's a full raid with a weekly lockout on LFR normal and heroic difficulty, it's got its own full loot table, and the item levels do match up to narrow bars. So, as an example, right as my guild will get ahead of the curve, unless something weird happens, there'll just be another raid for us to go and enjoy. Now, I do expect this to lean a little bit in the easier side, but Blizzard have said heroic, so I'm going to take that as meaning heroic. A lot of other things are happening too, like classic time walking finally making an appearance, restoring the original versions of Deadmine, Zulfurak, Dire Maul, and Stratholm to the game, which is awesome. Those have not been seen by loads of players for a long, long time. That, of course, includes the usual list of time walking rewards. There's transmogs, mounts, items, toys, all of that stuff. So definitely be sure to farm your time walking badges. Then there's the anniversary and its new event grounds. Basically, there's just a gigantic amount of stuff to do there. There are world bosses nearby. There's actually a secret hunting quest line, which is a little bit like the secrets of Azeroth, but done again. There are plenty of quests, a bunch of mini activities, and a whole group scenario helping Chromie basically at the Battle of Vat and Karaj, the whole opening the gates thing. So that's really neat. Now, Blizzard have also just revealed how the tier two remakes and the event currency will work. A lot of players were worried that they wouldn't be able to get everything. The good news is you can. So here's how it actually works. Your first tier two ensemble costs 60 event currency, the second costs 40, and the rest of them will just cost 20. Yeah, it will be a bit of a grind. You'll be doing a lot of gameplay content to get all of that, but this event does seem to run from patch through to perhaps July 7th. It seems to be quite long, so there'll be plenty of time and you will be able to get everything that you want. There's also a huge wave of class changes. You can learn about them in this video. Next, though, let's uh, tackle a bit of a fun controversy. And if you'd actually like to understand where Blizzard are going next in The War Within, there's some new lore in PTR. We did a deep dive that we posted over on Bellular.Games, and over there we post so many things like the lore walking podcast, all of our articles, but in this case, I just want to highlight, it's a really damn good article. It brings together all of the lore hints that are pointing towards Undermine and an island off the coast of Kazalkar that uh, may be the tip of Belodar, like the other bit, the top of it. It's a really good read. Check it out, and of course you can do so with a free trial below. Mythic Plus then, you may have noticed there's a lot of controversy swirling around it. Like seriously, if you go to the forums, which, uh, you can do, I don't recommend it though, right there, Reddit, anywhere else, you'll just see a lot of rage. A lot of people with depleted keys, pugs not being able to handle the overwhelming increase in difficulty because of a whole bunch of different systems, and it's just been a rough time. Blizzard haven't really fixed that stuff, but they are at least trying. They've made Mythic Plus just a bit easier. Now, to get Gilded Crests, you need to do a plus 8 instead of a plus 9, so that will be quite good for people who are chasing those gear upgrades. Also, the Zalatath's bargain affixes have been seriously buffed. Seriously. The duration is up from 30 seconds to 20, and that may not seem big, but... Well, as an example, that's pretty much your whole party having heroism for another 10 seconds, and getting that, like, what, every two minutes, every 90 seconds, because it's a pretty regular thing, that is good. Other things have changed, though. The Zalatat's Guile Affix has been nerfed. It now only adds 10% to health and damage when it kicks in at keys that are 12 and above, because turns out the 20% health and damage on top of all of the other scaling was uh, a total stomping of the balls only some people are into. There are actual dungeon nerfs then, so there's some for the Necrotic Wake and Stone Vault that are coming with maintenance next week. People will be particularly happy about the Stitch Flash boss. It's got 20% less HP and the group-wide rot damage is down 30%, but there is a bit of an offset there because javelins, right? So the javelins that everybody held for that boss no longer stack. And what this basically will be is a huge nerf to the fight for uncoordinated groups, because basically if you knew how to do all the javelin stuff right, yeah, cool easy kill. 
but not everybody knew that, and it wasn't exactly intuitive. And still in that dungeon, the gatekeepers had another damage nerf, and forces from the skeleton have been increased a little bit, so you should have a few more pathing opportunities. And over in Stone Vault, Skarmorok has got less HP, does less damage, and is stunned for longer, and Iric has uh, had his health hit as well. Both of those fights are just long as hell, especially if Tyrannicals up, it can be, uh, you know, a little bit clenchy, so people will probably like that. Overall, I'd say it's pretty awesome the Blizzard are willing to make changes to the progression here mid-season. Asking for nines to progress gear was just causing serious community issues. Again, keeping in mind the whole like rescaling and redesign of the Mythic Plus system, there were always going to be teething problems. I hope that these at least get some of them there, but big picture, it's Mythic Plus, there's gear, people are going to want to get the gilded things, and that means a lot of people who will say, be full of hero gear from their delves, well, uh, the game will say, hey, go get some uh, go get some Gilded Crests. And then they'll find out they can only do that by uh, hopping into M+, and they will not be ready. Tell you what's often not ready, though. My computer and its FPS for raids. There may be some hope here. So if you find that your game slows to a crawl in raid, it may be fixable. Um, I don't know about you, but uh, any time I go through the web intermission in Silken Court, uh, basically, just computer dead. It's very bizarre. Anyway, some of our add-ons, due to a bug that's reportedly in Blizzard's end, may be the root cause here. Now, the good news is the LVI developer Lucky One and DBM developer Mystical OS have been doing lots of digging here, and they've discovered some major issues. The major offender is anything rendering a model on your screen. That can potentially take 10 FPS off, even for one of them which is mad. So the trick of solving this, unfortunately, is to check if your weak auras have got any models and uh, just deleting those things. The same actually goes for those 3D rendered portraits on your unit frames and nameplates, which a lot of people have got, so that's pretty rough. Now, the second issue then is a group update being bugged. Essentially, the game is constantly firing off one event way, way, way more than it should. I mean, if you're in computer science, you'll, you'll kind of know what's happening there if just an event is firing off like mad. And uh, because of that, it's causing add-ons that check your group details just to work far harder for no reason because they're getting pinged way more than they're supposed to. But that's not all the problems. While he was at it, Lucky One had one more bit of general advice, that filtering auras is massively CPU intensive, and the only workaround is to turn off aura tracking and set buffs and debuffs up manually, which for some people's custom setups will be a right pain in the ass. Some good news here is that Plater apparently avoids this stuff with its default settings for the most part, so if you're using those, you should be okay. He also found that certain fonts, especially especially really large fonts that support multiple languages, that those can also cause performance issues. And on top of all that, he highlighted a few issues that LVI can cause with some specific configurations, and mentioned the Cell, a popular raid frame add-on that also may be causing issues as well. Isn't that all fun? The TLDR is, if you are having unexplained frame rate drops in raid, and it's just God, it's just driving you mad. What you can try doing is turning off debuffs on your raid groups, turning off any 3D portraits and deleting weak ores that put models on your screen. And if you're really struggling, it's gonna suck, but just removing as many add-ons as you can, maybe turning down your graphic settings, that can kind of help. And on top of that, there's a really cool add-on that lets you profile the CPU hit and the resource hits of your various different add-ons. It's a little computer science-y, it's really fun, and we actually did a whole video on it a few months ago, so I'd recommend checking that out as well. Got a simple question. Did you forget about the damage buff in Nehru Bar? Because uh, I certainly did. And last week, people in my guild were wondering if Blizzard had forgotten about it as well, because it just hadn't showed up until it did this week. The way this works is once a week, killing each boss on any difficulty will give you one Nehru Bar Finery, and you'll be able to get, as an example, a maximum of eight this week. Every boss will only give you one, so that does mean that you can hop into LFR to, say, get Anserek if you've not been able to kill her in your regular raid team. And if you turn in 16 of these to the NPC just inside the raid entrance, you'll get a permanent buff to your account with a bonus 3% damage and healing in Nehru Bar. So you'll be able to get one stack of that every fortnight, and it will stack a total of eight times for a final value of an 18% health and damage buff, which is going to make you way, way stronger. That'll be 16 weeks, and that does mean that we've got a rough season two start date of February, which is pretty much a surprise to nobody. So make sure to just kill every boss every week, right? It's pretty damn simple. And I know for a lot of people, this could feel a little like moving the goalposts, from Blizzard's perspective, it's a little bit different. You see, there are times in the past where they've just had to nerf and nerf and nerf and nerf their raid bosses. And there's always going to be times where something is just unintentionally a bit harder, or is maybe harder at a particular group size. That happened with Broodkeeper, as an example. In this case, though, 
it's basically people earning their progress, right? Like earning the buff by doing the raid, which I think to most feels better than just slamming on a bunch of nerfs. Remember Dreamhaven? It's been a while, but finally we've got something from Mike Morheim's developer and publisher. Basically what happened here is Mike Morheim eventually decided, I do not want to be the president of Blizzard anymore. From Jason Trier's book, we very much learned that's because uh, he was just done with Bobby. He was done with Bobby, done with a big corporate machine. So he ended up leaving. Dreamhaven was announced, I've got to imagine, as soon as his non-compete uh, expired. And yeah, it's a publisher. It's got some in-house studios as well. And now two games have been announced. The first one is a game they're publishing very soon. It's called Linked Banner of the Spark, and it's an early access co-op hack and slash game by a new developer called Fuzzy Bot. Basically, you go on a mission alone or an online co-op, you build a town with resources that you find, and you get a stack of robots to help out. The second game, then, is from one of their own studios. It's called Secret Door, and the game is Sunderfolk. And to be honest, it's really cool. So when I describe it normally, your eyes may roll, but the twist, I think, is what makes it matter. So it's a co-op tactical turn-based RPG that you can even control with your phone. But, uh... Don't worry, it's not a mobile game, it's just a game that's on every major platform. The phone thing is an accessibility thing so that you can get everybody together to actually play the game and uh, to have their own controller and their own reference sheet because this is their attempt at making a streamlined tabletop gaming experience that everybody can play and that is basically carried by loads of what I just called Blizzard Polish and Love. I think it's gorgeous. And in a post Baldur's Gate 3 world where a lot of people are getting into D&D or just the sorts of games that a lot of us played when we were younger, with that growing, I think this is a pretty cool idea. It may not be for everyone, but it does look pretty damn good. And I think their tagline says it all. The tagline is, Rediscover Game Night. Which, uh, you know what? That's damn appealing. And that's also it for the news, but it's not it for content. Check out this video that we published just yesterday. It's about the Harrenir. It will explain loads of things that I think most people missed. Stuff from side quests that, uh, yeah, I know, you, 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 you didn't read the text. That's fine, that's fine, people don't. But we've even went deep. We found the bits where Blizzard went deep into the game's history, and uh, it's just awesome. So check it out. It could even set up what patch 11.2 will be.